I don't know if you, you I'm pretty sure you know this, but throughout the show, all you hear people say is, you have limits, you have limits, you have limits. And then what does he say when he kills Michael at the end? I have no limitations. Exactly. So he he wants to reach a point where he has no limitations, that he has no limits. So he's clearly someone... So one, that, that plays into the cool factor. One of the reasons why he he's very cool, cause, and cool is like a weird word to use because it's it's very subjective. What you find cool is not is might not be what I find cool. However, what makes him universally cool is that above everything that he's ever done, he's broken limit his limits over and over and over again. He keeps going up against guys who are uh, guys in organizations who are dangerous. not only increasingly dangerous, but like bigger maybe, than him, like way bigger than his operations, and he continues to win. Because he never loses. Well, no, he loses, but like he, I'm kidding. but he loses. Like for example, in season five, he lost, but in in season six and pretty much every other season before that, like uh, with uh, Luca Calzone, uh, he. <laughs> you mean Changrela? Chang. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> so. So what against happened? Luca Luca Trangreta, he lost a lot in that fight, but he ended up he still ended up killing him. He still Luca Tran- Trangreta still ended up dying, and he that guy was a lot bigger than uh, than uh, than Tom. Even even within his own country, he was a lot bigger. Yeah, I think what I think part of it is is like the Thomas before season one had you know he had that girlfriend. That you know we've heard about. I think Paulie was mentioning it. Like yeah. you know, he had a girlfriend that he was you know planning to marry. And I think the family didn't like him, and then eventually the girl. But they were going to get married anyway. And then, uh, you know, his girlfriend just died, and then his depression from that led him to looking for purpose. And then this is why he convinced uh, his brothers to come with him to war. And then oh, in war, shit. we see how it keeps all those scenes where you know he has like he's having like PTSD fits in his bed it keeps flashing back to him to the like, trenches like, of yeah, France to the yeah. trench with that guy in the mud all the time every season yeah so i think that scarred him to the point where he's just like i don't want to be out of control anymore i don't want to leave things up to fate and he's going to make his own fate i think that's why and, and that's a good point yeah Aww. this this is part of Gold star. <laughs> I got a sticker. I think that I, yeah i think this is this is why i think he's such a control freak like all of his growth has happened like all of his personal growth has happened before the show even started and then that's why i think he even treats even his most sacred personal relationships that even even then they're still not like completely off limits as far as what he'll sacrifice in order to keep his control of things what do you mean by that i mean like after grace's death he just gets back to business after Mm. After John's death, he just gets back to business, and we and like, and I mean, it's not that that deep of an observation. The other characters keep pointing it out. They keep telling him like, "You could stop. You don't have to stop." And he, the thing is, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be put in those situations where, oh, this thing knocked me down. I can't get back up. This thing knocked me down. I can't get back up. I and and I mean, it's it, it's toxic. The degree of punishment he'll put himself through. Just to come out on top and say, "See, I have no limitations." By the end, you know, by the end of the season of season six. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm I, glad Michael died. Yeah, I'm glad that line came right Fuck after Michael, Michael. died, because Michael was his only real, like, uh, rival or challenge within his family. That's true. Because all I have to say to Michael is, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> <laughs> I think his actor was phenomenal. There were definitely parts where you're just like, oh, you know, like, you know, this Michael kid might get a couple things. He might have some good ideas, but like, because he's going against Tommy and Tommy's already our guy, you can't help but side with Tommy on these things. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, we get attached to him. We kind of don't want Tommy out of the picture for Michael to replace him. Yeah. And I'm glad they didn't go that way. But I think it's a testament to Michael's actor for like, you know, not making him like 100% unlikable. But then, you know, when, when the when the narrative called for it to be like, okay, Michael, you're fucking done. Get the fuck out of here. Shut the fuck up. You know? Like, I tried to... Whoa, whoa! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> like, it's, it's an interesting dichotomy, too. Michael's completely whipped, and Tommy has a much healthier relationship with his wife, or his wife is being a much healthier 
uh, emotional support than Gina and not being manipulative at all. But Tommy still won't give her the light of day. Meanwhile, Michael has a complete bitch of a wife played excellently by Anya yeah. Taylor Joy. She's incredible, but like completely hot. <laughs> Michael and, and yeah but like she has him wrapped around her little finger yeah. and the fact that Michael thinks that he could be Tommy's replacement like mm-hmm. meanwhile he couldn't be any different bro the, the the guag guag 3000 must be fucking phenomenal <laughs> 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 